Hello everyone. Today, let us study about wilt diseases caused by fungi. There are four major genera in fungi which majorly causes vascular wilts such as Ceratocystis, Aphistostoma, Fusarium and Verticillum. These are the dominant group of fungi which causes vascular wilts. Today let us study about the wilt disease caused by Fusarium species. Fusarium is one such group of organism under Deuteromycetes fungi which majorly causes vascular wilts. The, some of the examples I have quoted in this particular slide. Wilt in case of Cajanus Cajan is being caused by Fusarium udum. That is in pigeon peas the wilt disease is due to Fusarium udum. Likewise in case of cotton the wilt disease is due to Fusarium oxysporum, the subspecies Vas infectum. In case of banana, the wilt is called as Panama wilt, which is caused due to Fusarium oxysporum, subspecies Cubans. Likewise, in case of tomato, it is Fusarium lycopersicae. Fusarium lycopersicae is the species of fusarium which causes wilt in case of tomato remember it is fusarium lycopersicae is the organism which causes wilt disease in case of tomato however in case of sugarcane it is fusarium saccharii variety saccharii is the one which causes wilt in case of sugarcane remember the different species of fusarium which causes wilt diseases in various economically important plant important for the point of examination now let us study about wilt disease in tomato the pathogen or the infecting organism or the casual organism is fusarium lycopersicae as you all know this fusarium belongs to the subdivision Deuteromycotina class Hypnomycetes order Monidiales family Dematiaceae and the Fusarium is the genus and Lycopersicae is the species. So as you all know this is one of a facultative parasite. Fusarium is one of a facultative parasite why it is called as facultative parasite because these group of organism they are found as a parasite even as a saprophytes that is the reason it's called as facultative parasite it can be either a saprophyte or a parasite you can even grow them in vitro condition so we would have seen the fusarium culture of fusarium in our laboratory also so how the colony morphology is they are usually the color depending upon the various species of fusarium color of the colony ranges from white or it can be orangish or it can be lavender some species they are light pink also whereas on the reverse the other side it may be light light or colorless sometime orangish or pinkish this is the colony morph white cottony mass it is and the mycelium is septate that's the characteristic feature of deuteromycetes also it's septate highly branched highly branched and they reproduce only by a sexual method sexual reproduction is completely lacking they produces the spores different kinds of spores they produce microconidia as you could see in these images microconidia macroconidia 
and even one more kind of spore called as chlamydospore are also been formed during unfavorable condition. They also reproduce by the process of fragmentation. One of the important characteristic feature, microscopic characteristic feature of this organism is the presence of sickle shaped, sickle, sickle shaped macroconidia where they are septate. The septa may vary ranging from 2 to 12 septa depending upon the species they belong. And in as a parasite, this particular fusarium causes systemic infection that is the is this is one of the soil borne organism infects the root system enters inside the root system enter inside the cortical region finally into the vascular bundle where their target is to infect the xylem that is the water conducting tissue so this organism is found intercellular they or found in between the cells of inside the host absorbs the nutrition grow and develop coming to the symptoms of this disease since this is one of the soil born organism and also this causes systemic infection that is the mycelia is present all over the plant body if you take any part any part ranging from flower or the root or the stem or the leaves or any or even the fruits if you take such infected part of the plant take a section and observe it under the microscope you could see the the parasite inside them so they are found to be systemic they causes systemic infection so once the infection has happened the symptom is being observed only on the aerial part of the plant usually on to the older leaves older leaves show the chlorosis that is yellowing or the yellow sheath or yellow streak formation happen on the older leaves that is the chlorosis happen and this streaks can even cover the entire leaves and even the younger leaves also start forming the chlorosis and at the same time you could see the formation of necrosis necros necrotic lesions are observed even on the leaf after the process of chlorosis you could see the brownish spots or the necrotic spots on the leaves this is nothing necrosis is nothing but the dead tissues so such necrosis happen Finally, the entire leaf or the entire twig dries, wilts and just droop down. And at the same time, if you take a longitudinal section of the stem and if you observe it, it you can see the entire vascular bundle has shown discoloration. This is due to the decay of the xylem tissue. And also finally, the entire plant dries, wilts and dies. These are some of the symptoms of wilt diseases in tomato. Once again I will repeat this is one of the soil borne disease and it is it, this fusarium shows systemic infection that is infection takes place to the all the part of the plant. Initial symptoms could be found on the older leaves where you could see the hallowing of the leaves that is the chlorosis can be observed this chlorosis can be even on the younger leaves later 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 the lesions can be observed in the leaves that is the uh, death of a tissue happen which leads to the brownish spot these lesions dries entire leaf entire twig entire branch wilts and dry and uh, at the same time, even the xylem tissues are affected. Finally, the entire plant wilts and dries and dies. These are some of the symptoms of this disease. Now, let us study the life cycle of fusarium in tomato plant. As I was mentioning before, Fusarium is one of a soil-born 
organism which you could find in the soil. Kindly observe this life cycle where you could find at the uh, the lower side of that particular of this particular slide you could see the formation of the uh, macroconidia microconidia chlamydospores etc so before see you could see uh, at the left hand side of this particular slide i could uh, show you the macroconidia microconidia chlamydospores mycelia and all so here if there are if the soil has been not sanitized properly if in previous crop of tomato if you can find the debris of the previous plantation also which had got infected if such debris have been found you could see any of these spores that is in those debris you can find mycelium either the mycelium or the chlamydospore or the macrospore macroconidia or the microconidia can be observed in our in the debris of the plant or in the soil especially the chlamydospores which has been produced by this fusarium if it is found persistent in the soil they go for the process of dormancy they can withstand any of the unfavorable condition and they are found in the soil for a longer time if such field or such soil is be not properly maintained if such propagule persist inside the soil what happen during favorable condition these spores start germinating they germinate and infects the root system of the plant so you could see the in the germinating spores the spores which are germinating during favorable condition by producing germ tube and later they infect the root system of the plant especially to the it can start from the root hair mycelium which is growing inside the root through the through the root hair the infection can also takes place it can either by penetration it can enter the root system either by direct penetration of the wall or it can enter even through the even the, through the wounds wounds it can enter or by direct penetration the mycelium or the uh, the germ tube enters inside the inside the host tissue once it enters inside the host tissue it enters into the epidermis epidermis then it can enters into the cortical region then they can enter into the vascular bundles that is the target of this particular fusarium is the xylem xylem is the target part where it enters into the xylem region you can observe in this particular um, uh, life cycle where the longitudinal section as well as the transverse section of the xylem xylem has been taken where you can see the the uh, entry of this mycelium inside the xylem vessels so xylem vessels or xylem is one of the water conducting tissue where this mycelium enters inside this particular xylem and also they enter and damage the xylem vessels so that the xylem vessels collapse and uh, uh, because of uh, which the uh, the blocking of the xylem happens so what happen once they enter inside the xylem tissue there they grow and uh, start reproducing also they can also uh, produce uh, the microconidia macroconidia also inside that particular xylem because of the accumulation of such mycelium what happens the xylem gets blocked because of the at the same time even the xylem vessels are also infected and uh, uh, also they start uh, rotting so that is the reason in the symptom which i had shown some of the image if you take a transverse section or longitudinal section of this time and if you observe you could find the the browning or the rotting of the xylem uh, tissue or the vascular bundle happening that is the reason the reason behind is because of this fusarium uh, uh, fusarium which is uh, been found uh, accumulating inside this uh, xylem region and uh, uh start uh, growing uh, and also start producing uh, spores like uh, microconidia macroconidia and all at the same time this 
uh, xylem uh, has been found blocked by this particular fusarium because of the blockage of the xylem what happens the conduction of the water we know xylem is one of the important water conducting tissue where the root can absorb the water and this water is being translocated to the upper part of the plant that is happens by the xylem xylem vessels are the one which does this function if such xylem vessels itself gets blocked because of this organism what happen the water conduction doesn't happen because of this because at the same time even this uh, fusarium also has the ability of producing certain toxins called as fusaric acid please take a note they have ability of producing fusaric acid and uh, where this fusaric acid is been translocated to the entire part of the plant and at the same time this fusarium also has the ability of producing the certain enzymes so please make a note pectin uh, methyl esterase polygalactoronase and also cellulase these enzymes the fusarium produce what is the role of these enzyme they are the one which has the ability of breaking down the cell wall the main component of the cell wall is pectin cellulose and all if this fusarium has the ability of producing these enzymes the cell wall especially those xylem or any of the part of the plant uh, they start decomposing or they start decaying that is the reason you could find the necrosis necrosis because of the the dying or because of uh, the rotting or the decomposing of the cell wall component of the host cell and also fusaric acid is been translocated trans which has been produced by this fusarium is translocated to the entire part of the plant that is also one of the reason for this loss of this chlorophyll pigment that is the chlorosis which is happening and at the same time the fusarium is getting accumulated in this xylem vessels because of the accumulation of of this uh, uh, mycelium of the fusarium fusarium the blockage of xylem happen for which the water conduction to the upper part of the plant is been avoided because of which the plant obviously uh, they closes their stomata so the stomata has been closed the respiration is been affected because of which many physiological activity is also affected which leads to the chlorosis and followed by necrosis and the entire leaves start wilting and drying and finally finally the uh, this particular uh, fungi utilize all the nutrition present in the host and also start producing uh, 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 undergoing the process of uh, the reproduction where in which it produces uh, microconidia macroconidia and all where you could see from the stomata these conidia are exposed outside this happen only after the death of the plant you could see the formation of white mass white mycelium which you could find on the surface of the host after the death i'm talking about if you just take out those white mass and observe it under the microscope you could find n number of microconidia and macroconidia and such uh, uh, spores again if it is being found in the soil the cycle can continue once again i will repeat this cycle this is one of the soil bondesses if the infecting propagates either a hyphae or a mycelium or a microconidia macroconidia or a chlamydospore if it is found in the soil on such of favorable condition they germinate penetrate into the root system through root hair enters into the epidermis followed by cortex finally into the vascular bundle they enter especially to the xylem there they grow and reproduce forms a cottony mycelium inside the xylem and also they have a ability of producing a toxin called as fusaric acid and at the same time they have a ability of producing certain enzymes called as pectin methyl esterase polygalactoronase and cellulase these are the enzymes which are responsible for the decomposition of the cell wall component of the host which leads to the necrosis and at the same time the fusaric acid which has been produced by this fungi has been translocated along with the water to the upper part of the plant which also may lead for the process of chlorosis and at the same time the xylem vessels blocks and at the same time the xylem the cells of the xylem vessels is being found to be decomposed and also the blocking of the xylem happen because of the blockage of the xylem water conduction stops 
because of which transpiration is been affected so the plant closes its stomata because of the closure of the stomata many physiological activities are been affected which may leads to the fluorosis necrosis and the wilting of the plant and the drying and death of the plant happen later the sponge can enter again to the uh, uh, reproduction phase where in which the uh, sexual spores are being found exposed or they come out through the stomata and once you could uh, white uh, pustules or the mass of mycelium which you can find in the debris if you take out and observe it under a microscope you can find microconidia macroconidia chlamydospores and all which indicates the the uh, disease is due to fusarium so these are some of, this is about the life cycle of uh, the fusarium coming to the control measures of tomato wilt the indian institute of horticulture research bangalore under the leadership of dr at sadashiva they have developed triple disease resistant tomato hybrid called as arkaraksha which is found to be resistant to tomato leaf curl bacterial wilt and early blight disease the name arkaraksha rakshak is due to the river the arka is due to the liver river of bangalore arkavati and of which they have given the name as arkarakshak this particular variety gives a very good yield of around 75 to 80 turn per hectare and also the fruit is found to be round in shape and also it is large and it's around 90 to 100 gram deep red because of the accumulation of lycopene inside them and also the fruit wall is the fruit is very firm and it is suitable for both uh, fresh uh, distance marketing as well as for processing there are four major genera in fungi which majorly causes vascular wilts such as ceratocystis aphistostoma fusarium and verticillium these are the dominant group of fungi which causes vascular wilts today let us study about the wilt disease caused by fusarium species fusarium is one such group of organism under deuteromycetes fungi which majorly causes vascular wilts the some of the examples i have quoted in this particular slide wilt in case of cajanus cajan is being caused by fusarium udum it is in pigeon peas the wilt disease is due to fusarium udum likewise in case of cotton the wilt disease is due to fusarium oxysporum the subspecies vas infectum in case of banana the wilt is called as panama wilt which is caused due to fusarium oxysporum subspecies cubens likewise in case of tomato it is fusarium lycopersi persisi fusarium lycopersisi is the species of fusarium which causes wilt in case of tomato remember the other method is we can go for soil solarization so what is this soil solarization as in this particular image we can see wherever uh, the we want to grow any of our plantation so th that particular field apply some amount of water water is required watering is required and cover that particular region with polythene cover why the watering or the moisture is required because the fungal spores the fungal spores or the bacterial spores which is present inside that particular soil may be in the process of dormancy in order to break the dormancy some amount of moisture is required without moisture just if you are going for solarization our uh, whatever our uh, his, uh, aim may not serve that is the reason you moist the soil you can see this particular image you can see they have put some water pipes water pipes and they have moistened the soil 
and on that moist soil they are going to cover it with polythen sheet and they are going to expose it for sun for about 2 weeks and also you can leave it for 1 month or 2 months in the same condition but moisturing has to be done moisturing has to be done that is proper watering has to be done during that particular process what happens the temperature inside increases increases and also the polythene cover why we are putting so that the uh, evaporation may not happen and also uh, immediately whatever the soil has got heated they may again uh, get uh, cooled that is the reason to allow it for some time we, are, we can apply one polythene cover and moisture has to be maintained and leave it for around two weeks for one or one and a half months in that particular duration uh, we could see the entire that particular uh, field get sterilized that is called as soil solarization other best method is biological control use of trichoderma trichoderma is one of the best bio pesticide we are going to talk about this trichoderma what is the mode of action how actually it has been produced and all in my previous classes use of trichoderma as a bio pesticide and another important uh, thing is one more bio pesticide which we can use is called as mycostop. Mycostop is one of the uh, bio pesticide which is being made up of streptomyces chrysioviridis. This is one of the actinomycids which is being uh, used in this particular uh, product called as mycostop. What actually this particular streptomyces species does? This particular species, uh, streptomyces species, this particular product will be in the form of uh, powder. Powder, you can just make a drench and you can apply this particular powder. So what happens, the streptomyces species start growing, producing mycelium and they start growing around the root system of the plant and, uh, and it acts like a biological defense to many of the pathogens, say for example, Pythium species, Fusarium species. Botrytis species, Alternaria, Formopsis species, etc. So this is this mycostop is one of an important uh, biological uh, control which consists of Streptomyces griseoviridis species, which is very active against Fusarium species. One is Trichoderma, other one is Streptomyces griseoviridis. These two uh, pesti uh, uh, bio pesticides can be used to control this. Coming to the control measures of tomato wilt, the Indian Institute of Vertical Research, Bangalore, under the leadership of Dr. A.T. Sadashiva, they have developed triple disease resistant tomato hybrid called as Arkaraksha, which is found to be resistant to tomato leaf curl, bacterial wilt, and early blight disease. The name Arkaraksha rakshak is due to the river the arka is due to the river river of bangalore arkavati and of
coming to the disease management of panama wilt or panama disease in case of banana always prevention is better than cure that is the reason use of disease resistant varieties such as oven mongil rajabale wamanakili cavendish banana cavendish banana is one of the first disease resistant banana which was produced all over the world use of proper sanitary measures that is removal of all the infected part of the plant or the entire plant along with the sucker has to be removed and it has to be burnt into ashes and also keeping the the plantation clean use of healthy planting stock care to be taken during cultivation avoiding root injury and nematode control soil solarization steaming also gives better results use of disease free suckers for planting always see to that before planting the suckers which we have obtained for the process of plantation has to be disease free avoiding contaminated soil the soil that is the the land or the field which we are using for the process of cultivation should be devoid of any such pathogen crop rotation with paddy application of lime 1 to 2 kg per pit to the infected pit after chopping of the plant's part that is after the plant infected plant has been removed from that field even in that soil the propagule may persist that is the reason we can apply 1 to 2 kg of lime so that we can control this pathogen dipping of sucker in carbendazim 1.1% solution before planting before planting the sucker better to treat the sucker with carbendazim so that the chances of infection can be avoided neem cake as we know neem is also one of a very good bio pesticide along with trichoderma viridae should be applied in planting pit to get the better results and also soil drench with 0.2% carbendazim or rhizome or the sucker injection with 0.2% of carbendazim also gives a very good results these are some of the method to control this panama wilt thank you